Thank you for joining us for another edition of Ask Me Anything with Teresa Shepard. I'm really excited today to talk to you a little bit about, are you defensible? This is something that Teresa and I have talked at length about, and um, it's really scary how quickly you can not be defensible. Tell us all about what that really means, Teresa. Thanks. Well, being defensible really is not something that we think about uh, when we walk into our practices that morning, you know, it's like, okay, are we going to be defensible today? But we, that's the, what we need to be thinking of because in reality, anything that we do is subject to great scrutiny by the patient, by an insurance company, if that's applicable. And if something goes south by an attorney or by your um, malpractice carrier, so when I talk about risk management and I'm doing a snapshot um, for a client, the thing that I find most is there's several areas that are causing great risk for the practice, but the point being, did they actually do anything wrong? So I find that, so if we're talking about, um, let's just say it's a clinical issue and you end up with a, a provider that needs to show their documents, the patient thinks they've been wronged somehow, or, or there's a question and your records get sent off to an attorney or to TDIC. And we're talking about number three cram. Something went south with that for whatever reason. So what are we doing with that? And TDIC is looking at your records and you may have the most perfect feather margins in the country. You may have the absolute best team. You may have graduated top of your class. So there is nothing wrong with your prep clinically. But nothing is written down. So you are not defensible. Well, I gave the patient written post-op instructions. I gave the patient instructions. I dispensed this. I dispensed, mm, doesn't say that here. So it's not about, in many cases, what you did or didn't do. It's that you can't prove anything. So I always say the two most important words in dentistry are prove it. So if you're not defensible, doesn't mean you did anything wrong, but you can't prove you didn't. The burden of proof will be on you. So being defensible is exactly what it means, is being defensible. And that is going to start with your diagnostics and your narratives. Documentation, documentation, documentation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an old sad song, but it's, <laughs> it's one of the you know, the hits that keep on, on giving. Does this typically, where do you see this typically falls the most? Is it in the room while diagnostics is happening and the, the documentation is falling short there? Maybe the assistant is not getting, or is it after that point? Where are the biggest breakdowns happening when you do your snapshots and, and you're, there's a documentation breakdown? Is there an area where that happens most? You know, not, I, I wouldn't say specifically most. Okay. It's, it's per practice, really. Okay. If, if you're not going to be good at documenting, um, and I say, when I say good, I mean, you know, complete. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you don't have that system, and we're back to the S word, right, systems, if you don't have that system and you don't have that training in place, then a lot of things get documented based on what an assistant might catch the doctor saying, or the doctor sometimes is speaking so quickly, there's, there's no good way to, to document that, or there's an over-reliance on templates. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in favor of templates, it's a love-hate relationship for me because we don't have a lot of time. There is a lot of information that we need to get on paper. 
So templates can be a great way to help speed up that process, but templates are actually more of a prompt. You can't just cookie cutter your patient. Not every patient's prep runs the same. Not every patient's perio treatment is the same. Not every patient's evaluation is the same. But I see a lot of cut and paste when I do a snapshot. It's an easy area to get sloppy. Very sloppy. Um, and it, if I'm reading, a narrative. I don't care if it's an exam, a cleaning, or you know, a complicated surg surgical extraction. It doesn't matter what the procedure is. If I read an entry and I have a question, it's not complete. Now that question might be: Did you? It says here you packed cord. Did you remove the cord? Well, of course we did. Really? Didn't write it down. And, Sensible. and, you know, I was an R, I still am an RDA, but I chair cited for 10 years. And there have been times where, um, you know, early on, you've removed the cord after packing, after the impression. And then a couple of days later, the patient might come in with, you know, a, some swollen tissue or whatnot. And you're checking that and there's a little piece of cord there. It just happens. It gets caught up in the burr and it just gets embedded for some reason in the margin. And even though you think you got it out, you didn't. So if that ends up being a problem, does your documentation says you removed the cord? If a patient it has a, night, a latex allergy and you don't have listed that you specifically used non-latex gloves, the patient could go home, blow up a balloon, yay, <laughs> right. and go into anaphylactic shock from something that what, didn't even happen in your practice. But they're going to go, I went to the dentist and they used gloves on me. Again, maybe you did use nitrile gloves, but did you document it? That so is this, a great example. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of practices nowadays, they don't even buy latex products at all because it's just not worth the risk. Yes. Um, but it, it's something that has to be addressed. So it, these little, they're nuances, but they're nuances that can be the difference between TDIC writing a $50,000 check to a patient or saying, no, it's written down right here. You know, it, it, it's all about not being right or wrong or clinically appropriate. It's about being defensible. Mm -hmm. Not being sloppy, but also being having a, a team that's competent and trained. Um, and we can help you with this. We uh, would be happy to um, get your team trained up to the place, uh, to, the, and to the standards that they need to be so that their documentation is complete. Teresa is a fantastic expert, as you can tell. <laughs> So thank you for joining us in another AMA. If you have any questions, additional questions, or, or completely different questions that we can answer, uh, email, email us or DM us, DM us and come and see us on our next AMA. Thank you for joining.